Hi, Moss here with the FIO X5 Mark II digital audio or portable digital audio player. And this is the follow up to my unboxing video where I, I uh, took it out of the box and showed all the various uh, bits and pieces that come in there. And so if you haven't already seen that, it's worth checking out because it goes through a lot of things that I uh, probably won't go through in this video. One of the things I went through, which I'll briefly recap, is I compared it to the original X5 in terms of dimensions. And you can already see that it's uh, smaller and uh, more streamlined in design with none of the chamfering around and kind of neater overall design than the original X5. And that translates into a few functionality changes, well not many, uh, the power button being on the side and the number of ports being reduced from three to two, which does change how you use it slightly. And uh, also the uh, micro SD card slots are now exposed and easily accessible, whereas before they were behind covers on the original X5. So what I want to cover this time is the user interface on, on the X5 Mark II, because there have been ch changes also in the streamlining of the physical design, streamlining of the UI as well. So the, starting with the main menu, the thing that bugged me about the, the main menu of the original X5 is that the sort of continuous scroll, and I used to have a, an LG mobile which had this, and it annoyed the crap out of me because you never know where you are in the list. And there are seven items, I went through and just counted them, seven items in the original X5 and five on the X5 Mark II. And that's because two of the items are now missing. But those item, the, the five remaining items sit fixed while when you scroll through the, uh, the list, the items remain fixed but highlighting moves. And that makes it much easier to, to see where you are in, in, on the main menu. But the two items missing are the favorites. Favorites are now called collections, and, or collection I should say, and hid under play by, play by category. If I don't accidentally hit the volume control, um, that's down here. The other thing is missing is the EQ that is now buried in the settings, way down the settings, which I'm going to go to next. So the settings are important because they affect some of the changes that are in the, the physical layout of the device. The buttons are all in the same places uh, with, uh, with a menu and back and a back and forward, except that uh, the power button being on the side, of course, has, has changed a couple of things. Uh, the, one of the things is when you used to plug in the X5 USB, a small light would light up in these through these four small holes. And now there's a, a uh, now there's a light on the, the power button on the side indicating the status of the X5 there instead. So into the settings, if we go in there, there's a few more a couple more things than there were there before. We still have language, uh, we still have update media library button, uh, we still have the key lock settings which are very handy. If you're not already familiar, there are three lock screens available. Three lock screens available. So when the screen's are locked, you can either have just the volume controls operating, volume controls and play button, or volume controls play button and forward and back buttons. Now it's very handy, I find, being able to, to have that option, uh, depending on whether you're going to shove it in a pocket or shove it in a bag or or hold it in your hand. Deciding what buttons are available in that when you're not looking at the screen is is certainly a, uh, certainly very handy and something I wish. How uh, even despite the X5 being functionally like externally much like an original iPod, I do appreciate having much more control over the functions you would have in an original iPod. Uh, the screen timeout, uh, you can set various things there, 30 seconds to indefinite, uh, which is handy if you're using it through US, you know, say as a USB DAC, maybe you might want to leave the screen on, although I don't know if it will burn in or, or damage it doing that. Brightness, of course, uh, which I might turn up so you can see it clearly. Uh, the idle standby, idle standby timer, sleep timer, uh, the multifunction outputs. That's something that's not on the X5 because there is now uh, there are now two outputs which have three functions. So on the original X5, of course, you had three ports. If I stand them both up, it'll be obvious. You had three ports. You had headphone out, line out, and coax, digital out. On the X5 Mark II, there are now two: your headphone out and the combined line out and coax out. Now that combined output, you have to select whether you want it to have a line out or coaxial output. And that changes not just that, but the kind of cable you use to connect with. If you're using the coax output on the original X5, you would use this little neat cable which had uh, an RCA socket on one end and a TS plug on the other. And that's fairly standard for what, for what is used for um, coax on uh, say portable digital audio players. However, with the Mark II, they, the cable has changed and the connections have changed. So the Mark II has this other cable with a four pole plug and an RCA socket on the other end. And the four pole plug only uses the sleeve, the, the sleeve and last ring for the coaxial connection. 
So if you've already got cables made up with this kind of connection for another device or an X5, then and you get an X5 Mark II, well, you're going to have to change your cables. You know, to get a new one made, or uh, or well, yeah, basically get a new one made or use this one because the uh, the standard ones won't work with this connection. So that's a bit of a, a bit of a nuisance. But I found a lot of people are using these for connecting to say a, a better DAC like a, a Hugo or Mojo, and uh, from Cord. And so that's going to be very important. But uh, quite a few people uh, have got cables made from. I know Mood Audio makes a really neat little uh, co has a little neat coaxial cable, which is only about this thickness, which they can make with uh, whatever connection you desire. So any little any of the cable makers out there should be able to hook you up with something which is 75 ohms for preference. Um, although over short connections maybe won't make a lot of difference at all. So that's that's one of the critical settings you're going to have to know about in the X5 Mark II. Now, also as well, if you haven't seen the settings, let's go through a couple more. You have your file name display can be both title or file name. USB mode, of course, this can be the X5 can be marked. Uh, Mark II can be used as a DAC, just as the X5 could, which I will talk about later. USB mode is either storage, so you can use it as a card reader and copy using uh, using the X5 as a card reader to copy files onto, or into DAC mode to use it as a digital to analog converter, and. Of course, you can. Um, the last selection, which is not, which is unique to the X5 Mark II compared to the X5, is use the inline headphone control or support the inline headphone controls. So if you've got a pair of IEMs which have a uh, play pause uh, buttons on there, you can use those controls with the X5 Mark II, which you couldn't read with the original X5. And of course, the themes. And I've got one of the cheesiest themes on. Uh, oh, you got blue jeans themes um, and other themes to. Uh, other themes which you can use. Also, let's, we'll stick with the theme one in black, I think. The About screen, which shows information about the SD card and, and the firmware on here. And uh, you can format your SD card, reset to factory defaults. And that's the main lot of settings. Of course, that is not the whole deal because you have a whole lot of playback settings too. Your play mode can either be uh, shuffle, repeat one song, or repeat all songs. And when I'm teaching kids, I often like the repeat one song. Thing if I'm if I'm teaching kids and I, I want to repeat back the same song to do multiple times because they want to always do it do stuff one more time as kids do. Uh, resume mode last song which is very handy or in the last position of the last song if you have to switch off pause in the middle of a song and, and switch off or if you're listening to say podcasts which is very handy you don't want to have to find the place in the middle of a podcast which is something I have to admit is an absolute nuisance with the times I've had to do it. Um, Gapless playback, obviously, uh, max volume, power on volume can be the last setting or the fixed volume setting, which is also handy. Uh, gain, low or high. Equalizer, and this is where you set your equalizer settings now, it's not on the main screen. When you do that, you can select which equalizer you want or custom and go through the individual, unit, individual ones, select them and adjust them using the, the scroll wheel. So that I'll set that back to off so I don't confuse myself when I'm doing listening tests. Um, balance, of course. Uh, play through folders, which is very handy if you want to continuously play through a bunch of folders. And that's it for the play settings. And as I said, despite it having basically the, the physical functionality, uh, excluding digital out of a basic, or the, the kind of layout of controls of a, an original iPod, it has way more functionality than one and probably way more modern components than anything like the original did, despite it having a physical control wheel. So next, the sound. Now, just like the case has improved and the user interface has improved compared to the original Mark I X5, the, the, the Mark II has uh, also improved sound quality wise compared to the original. The original I tried, in IM wise, I tried it with the Sony XBA30s as my basic IMs. Fiti Partez for the mid-range, they're a bit expensive for a mid-range IM, but you know, they're a handmade Japanese product. And the you know high-end IEMs like the Altimeters reference monitors, the JH Audio range, and uh, I found it kind of hit the wall at the mid-range uh, of IEMs, and I didn't get the most out of the Altimeters reference monitors and the JH Audio range that say the better DAPs that I had on hand, such as the AK240 and good old Calix M did. Uh, the in fact, actually, it wouldn't. It, the original won't drive the JH Audio Layla as well at all. It just sounds kind of off. So there's obviously, obviously a problem there. The Mark II, that problem is well and truly rectified. 
Now with the Mark One again, if I added an amp, much of the problem was solved. So you have you got your Fio amps, which are inexpensive. You have uh, the nice fancy amps like the Head Amp Pico Power. There are quite a range out there. But the main thing was that uh, it needed an amp to get the most out of it. The Mark II, you don't have so much of a problem with that at all. It has no trouble driving Layla's. Um, it's more up and close in sound quality to the Calyx M. And it'll even drive full-size headphones, I mean, basically decently. It'll, it'll give you a sound stage, which the, the original Mark I didn't. And, uh, and so that make, makes it much, you know, sort of eliminates the need for an extra amp for the, for the one. And the other thing is, I mean, the X5's main competitor was, or you know, still is, say, a, a smartphone, because the smartphone sound quality is improving. And compared to my iPhone, maybe it's not necessarily that much more resolving, but it is kind of warmer and smoother sounding, which, given originally it's targeted for the Chinese market and their classical music uh, is kind of better suited to listening to a slightly warm amp or warm, slightly warm tuned sound, makes it quite good. It's not on the level of, say, the DSP uh, controlled SoundAware M1, which is quite a sophisticated uh, DAP, and it's not on the level of my good old called Mojo, which I have here in my little portable rig. But all the same, considering what its its price, it is kind of much better value than you know if you if you. Again, smartphones are very expensive. They don't without some trickery with funny adapters. You don't get a lot of storage uh, on a smartphone as much as you do with the two cards you can put in here. You'd have to use an adapter uh, to a larger SD card or, or an on-the-go cable to a, a drive of some kind. You don't need to do that with an X5, albeit that you have a fairly basic interface. Now, there was less improvement between this and this and plus the Pico Power. And given that it's about $475, well, that's great. You know, you may get a bit more... Uh, I don't even know if you, I don't even feel you get a lot of improvement even out of the E12A, which I've got here. It kind of makes it redundant. I mean, you might get a little bit, but consider it's a portable device. And I mean, considering even my minimal portable rig is getting quite thick and chunky. Uh, all, all, being, all being said, say on public transport, I think it's just about spot on now. And it seems to drive everything I have around here quite nicely. Uh, we have the RHA T20Is, which I have, Talk Audio. It's probably on about this level of sound quality. It may not get quite the most out of my Ultimate Ears reference monitors or the JH Audios, but at least will drive them and probably even drive some nice closed back uh, portable headphones quite well. So that's a good step up that it has from the original. The sound, similar adapts that are around, we have the Lotu Port PAW5000. It's got different features. It's got a very basic interface, but it's got Bluetooth. And it's got, a, it's got a balanced out, although whether that is uh, any use, I'm not quite so sure about. I think it's more for convenience, if anything. But it's a little bit heavier uh, being a milled aluminium versus this uh, more uh, mass, ma mass market kind of device, thin aluminium casing and with plastic. Uh, and, uh, but all the same, it's now about spot on in, in what its sound quality is capable of. Uh, or what is, is, is good for a portable device. And uh, otherwise, I would if, if they'd only been as good as the X5, I, I wouldn't have been able to recommend it. So, But that leaves the X5 overall as a solid improvement over the original. And if, again, if you don't mind the basic interface with its, its you know, scroll and click, and you don't, and you want a couple of micro SD card slots, and you might want to use it as a DAC, in which it won't be as good as a dedicated DAC or some of the more sophisticated models out here like SoundAware and of course Cord Mojo. But if the, maybe you want to use it as a transport for something like a Cord Mojo or what have you. If you don't mind that interface, you, playlist support isn't a huge priority as getting playlists into the, the correct M3U format with backslashes instead of forward slashes and all that kind of jazz, which I found a huge nuisance. Then actually it's quite a good... Uh, Quite a good, quite a good unit, and about spot on in price. So, in that regard, that's the Fio X5 Mark II. And so, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, like you want to know a little bit more detail about a particular pairing with IEMs or headphones that I have, just check my uh, Head5 profile to see what I have on hand before asking if you can. Uh, let me know, and I'll do my best to answer them in the comments.